Hello and welcome to another episode on Da Vinci Academy, where history and anthropology come alive. Today, we have an enthralling question for you. Japan's remarkable success during the Meiji Restoration. How did Japan emerge as the only Asian country not only to successfully reform, but also triumph over the West in the age of imperialism? In this video, we will focus on fundamental internal reasons how Japan achieved modernization. If you haven't seen it yet, we strongly encourage you to watch part 1 of this series for essential background information. Before exploring it, let's quickly recap the fundamental external drivers of Japan's rapid modernization. Japan's path to modernization was characterized by minimal Western interference, as major powers were preoccupied with their own affairs. The Meiji Restoration, Japan's rapid industrialization and modernization, unfolded alongside significant global events like Britain and Russia's Great Game, the Franco-Prussian War, and America's westward expansion. The convergence of global distractions allowed Japan, navigating through its most volatile years, to remain largely unnoticed by these powers, providing it with a unique opportunity to focus on its internal development without external interference. However, the story of Japan's success is not just a tale of fortunate circumstances. Internally, the nation had already cultivated a substantial foundation for change and progress, well before the major shifts of the Meiji Restoration. First, despite its general stance of isolation, Japan maintained a consistent and strategic engagement in trade with Western nations. Japan's engagement with the Western world dates back to 1542 a full three centuries before the Meiji Restoration. This early period was marked by Japan's initial contact with Portugal, sparking a critical exchange of ideas and technology. This interaction introduced Japan to firearms and showcased Portugal's advanced technological skills. With this engagement, by 1600, Japan had not only built up a larger collection of firearms than any other country worldwide, but the quality and effectiveness of his weapons were also unparalleled. Another landmark event was the establishment of the Edo period in 1603. This era saw the creation of Dejima, an artificial island, which became a crucial hub for Japan's international dealings. Through Dejima, Japan began regular and direct trade with the Dutch East India Company, forming a direct link with the Western world. Although the trade between the Netherlands and Japan was relatively small in scale and had a limited economic impact, its true significance was in the extensive exchange of knowledge it facilitated. Dutch merchants acted as essential channels of information from Europe, playing a critical role that went far beyond basic trade. Through these exchanges, Japan regularly received detailed reports on the political situations, technological progress, and cultural trends in the Western world. Ironically, the Black Ships incident poignantly reflects Japan's interactions with the global community. Although the arrival of these ships initially shocked lower officials and commoners, the Japanese leadership was not caught fully unawares. They were already braced for such an event, embodying a sense of inevitability. Thanks to their interactions with the West, they had been well informed in advance that Commodore Perry had set sail from the east coast of the United States, heading toward Japanese shores. To put it more comprehensively, the three centuries of sustained interaction and exchange with the West can be viewed as a prelude of the rapid Meiji Restoration. The second reason is attributed to the Japanese leadership's sharp and detailed analysis of the global political scene and their swift adoption of benchmarking strategies. Three centuries of interaction with the Western world endowed Japan's ruling class with keen insights into the complexities of global politics. Even during a period of internal strife, highlighted by the Bashan War, there was a clear and bipartisan consensus among the leadership that modernization was essential. This unanimous recognition of the need for advancement wasn't mere chance. It was shaped by the era's demands, which led to the prompt and strategic implementation of benchmarking from global standards. During the Meiji era, Japan adopted a forward-thinking global perspective. Its leaders embarked on enlightening journeys worldwide. A prime example of this was the Iwakura Mission, a significant diplomatic expedition to the West involving Japanese officials. This mission wasn't limited to diplomats. It also included a group of students. These students, deeply engaged in the educational and cultural environments of the United States and Europe, returned as key figures in Japan's future development. The valuable information and insights they gained were crucial in establishing Western-style infrastructures and administrative systems in Japan. 
Since the during encounter with Commodore Perry's black ships in 1853, Japan had embarked on a meteoric rise, achieving a series of formidable milestones in 30 years. In 1872, Japan established compulsory elementary education, followed by the founding of a national bank in 1873 and the opening of the country's first university in 1877. In 1875, a Supreme Court was established. In 1885, Japan had implemented a cabinet system of government, marking a significant step in its political evolution. There you have it. The fundamental internal drivers of Japan's rapid modernization stem from its deep understanding of global dynamics, honed over more than 300 years of engagement with the Western world. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. Stay tuned to Da Vinci Academy for more insights into our past. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating history and anthropology content.